Welcome back to Telltale Books. I'm going to talk sans Emily, and she said I could do this, about the sequel to the left-handed booksellers of London called The Sinister Booksellers of Bath. Now, I got a hold of this book as an advanced reader copy from NetGalley, and I've already posted reviews to Goodreads and Amazon and shared that online. And the book is out. You can go into bookstores and buy it. So I want to post a video review of it. And uh, Emily has, I, we got Emily a signed copy of Sinister Booksellers when we went and, and she has not yet gotten around to reading it. Um, her loss, because this is a wonderful young adult fantasy book very well written really good characters some enjoyable situations lots of action a lot of interesting detail about um, about mythology uh, a variety of mythology not just Celtic is brought into this story and it, and it is really interesting unless he just already knew all this stuff there must have been some research that went into it about the different gods and goddesses that he that he refers to so without giving away any any plot in this um, the two main protagonists Merlin and I forget the woman's name now Susan I got notes here Merlin and Susan. Well, Merlin is visiting some of the booksellers that have that man a bookstore in Bath, England. And Merlin grabs a bee. Well, the bee flew out of, oh, what was it? A map. And by grabbing that bee, Merlin gets transported into this, it's kind of like a part of our world that one of the um, magical beings in this story has taken and removed out of space and time into its own little offshoot continuum. And so Merlin's trapped there. Susan has a way that she can, with her powers, that she can go in and get him out. So she goes in, and they find out that the person who created this little offshoot world has been grabbing people from England and murdering them. They're hanging, and they are dismembered. It's gruesome. So they got a serial killer on their hands, and the serial killer is one of these old beings that... Um, that they encounter a, a being very similar to Susan's father from the first book and that starts the adventure fighting this ancient being ancient mag magical being and a great adventure it is like I say the characters are very well done the writing is really good. There's research that went into us into this, so there's a lot of intelligence, a lot of intelligent research went into this story. Um, I read this one first. I read Left-Handed Booksellers of London before we went to hear Garth Garthnick's talk in Milwaukee, and then um, after that, Book Two, Secret Project Two from Brandon Sanderson the ebook was released and Samantha and I wanted to read that right away so we did and then right after I finished that I read the Sinister Booksellers of Bath because I wanted to get you know the book had already been released and I still needed to get my review into NetGalley so I wanted to get that done as quickly as possible so I read the three books back to back and Hate to say, hate to disappoint Sanderson people, but the, in comparison to what Garth Nix is doing in his book, the Sanderson book, 
just doesn't hold up. These books by Garth Nix are better books. If you want to spend your money on a really excellent young adult book, buy the Garth Nix books. They're just better all the way around, from what I can see. Everything about them is better. Not to say, I, you know, I enjoyed the Sanderson book. It was good. It's enjoyable. People who buy that are, are going to like it, but it just, you know, when you compare it to Sinister Booksellers of Bath, you know, they both came out in, in April of 2023. When you compare the two, Sinister Booksellers of Bath is far and away the stronger book. And interesting thing, left-handed booksellers you could read just that one novel and stop if you don't want to get into a series. Garth Nix is promising an entire series of these booksellers' books. And so this is book two, but I feel enough is explained at the beginning. I mean, there aren't these long expositions of describing what happened in left-handed booksellers, but there's enough background given to you that if you didn't read left-handed left -handed booksellers, you'd still be able to get into this book and read it and enjoy it. I think you could read Sinister Booksellers of Bath on its own, just this book, and enjoy it and not have any, any issues. You're not going to be sitting there going, well, who is this? What, you know? Why is this going on? What's going on? You know, you're not going to be lost. Garth Nix puts enough into this that you're not going to be lost if you don't read the first book. But I would encourage you to read both because they're just a lot of fun. Um, we gave top tail status to the left-handed booksellers. I'm an old guy. I don't read my YA. I need Emily's help on, in deciding if this should get top tail status. But I am recommending that if you like this sort of thing, you should read it. And so I'll leave it at that. Um, hopefully soon Emily will read hers and she'll post her review and we can confer and, and give this thing top tail status. I'm betting that's going to happen. So this is number two in the series. So far we have kept up with the entire series, which is amazing for us. Um, the only other series Emily and I have finished, really, is the Space Odyssey series by Arthur Clarke. Oh, and I read that one by Nelson S. Bond. It's, it's only three shorter works, though. Um, so hardly counts. Otherwise, we're not really big on on following long series. Oh yeah, we also did read the Space Trilogy by C.S. Lewis. I forgot about that because the third book is totally forgettable. Um, anyway, did you read it? Are you interested in it? Leave comments. Tell us what you think about Left left-handed booksellers or sinister booksellers or anything else and uh, like us and subscribe us and come back for more and i'll see you in the next video